prepared in the, in the flight uh, from Tokyo to uh, Ma Malaysia to Bangladesh. Only in the flight I made these slides. <laughs> Let's start. Okay, uh, as I told you, uh, my major is fiber optic communication systems. Uh, I worked on this topic uh, more than 20 years. Not only theoretically, but also uh, I made some optical devices by myself and then uh, experiment. Okay, do you know uh, the brief uh, concept of uh, communication systems? Some of you know? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And we have these blocks in uh, fiber, uh, not only fiber communication, but the communication systems. Source encoder, transmitter, channel, receiver, then source decoder. And by using them, uh, we can transmit message from source to destination. Okay? We are focusing on these transmitters and receivers. And optical transport network is a model like this. We have several types of networks. Some of you may know uh, we have backbone network connecting metros or connecting between countries. Okay? And, and in the big city, we have metro network connecting some big buildings. Then we have another one, access networks. Access networks are for us. Okay? Access networks are for us. We use mobile phone. When we use mobile phone, we don't think we are using fiber optic communication systems. Do you think so? Okay. We actually use fiber optic communication systems in uh, Japan. And every time we hit our, uh, our display screen, okay? Fiber, without fiber optic communication systems, we cannot have a smartphone, mobile network. Then uh, we have this kind of uh, networks. Uh, then everywhere we use fiber optic communication systems. This slide is uh, explaining the traffic explosion in Japan. Horizontal axis is year, uh, starting from, I can't see well, I can see well, maybe 21. 2001 might be, and uh, this is end uh, 20, uh, so 2013. And as you can see here, uh, uh, traffic, uh, vertical axis is traffic. As you can see here, traffic is growing exponentially. And in 2013, it was over 100 gigabit per second. It's very, very huge amount of traffic in Japan. It's because of, for example, YouTube or other video, uh, video, video systems like Amazon Prime Video or something like that. And we only have high quality communications against this traffic explosion. We need to increase the transmission speed every year. Okay? It's very important to be connected together. And this is, uh, the, this table uh, explains the advancement of fiber optic communication systems. Uh, this is first generation system, uh, the transmission rate was up to 500 megabit, megabit, megabit per second, megabit per second. Second generation up to 2.5 gigabit per second, third generation 10 gigabit per second, next one 40 gigabit per second. Now, in Japan, we have 100 gigabit per second systems in service. And this, uh, not in, uh, this uh, engineers in uh, uh, manufacturing companies are trying to develop 400 gigabit per second systems. And the researchers are trying to de uh, develop 1 terabit per second systems. Okay? So, we need to have deep speed to overcome traffic explosion. And this is very simple, simplified uh, model of the fiber optic communication system. 
Here's laser diodes as light source, and then moderators here, and then multiplexer, optical amplifier, optical filter to produce noise, and transmission line uh, based on optical fiber. Then the signal light is divided into different photodiodes by the multiplexer and receive the signal directly. This is uh, this. Uh, this figure shows IMD, Intensity Modulation Direct Detection System. This is a little bit old fashioned systems, but this is the basic of a fiber optic communication system. Okay, first, uh, let me uh, explain some very brief uh, explanation of uh, laser. Maybe you know laser is abbreviation of lamp light amplification of stimulated emission of radiation. Uh, this be, uh, these figures shows, uh, explains uh, the system, uh, principle uh, very briefly, but I omit this. Later on, if you want to have this right, contact me, I will send you it. Anyway, operation inversion or public payroll, carry equation, uh, you, don't, you need to know many things about physics to realize high-speed fiber optic communication systems. I know you are IT uh, people, that you want to concentrate on IT, but I prefer, uh, recommend you to study physics if you want to contribute to overcome fiber optic communication systems. Anyway, no, we have many, many difficulties on the, uh, the on developing new generation high speed fiber communication systems but I know you don't want to know about this but please uh, see this video this uh, slide explains distributed feedback laser diodes and if we want to transmit more data uh, using light then we need to have very clean sinusoidal wave as carrier. Do you know the principle of uh, modulation? So, data transmission, transmission, did you learn? If you know, please raise your hand. No? Nobody? Not? Okay. Then, the very basic of communication system is sinusoids. Sinusoids. If we want to transmit data in high speed, at very high speed, then we have to have very, very green sensors. But this type of public laser does not supply such green sensors. Instead, they have much tones. These are a mixture of several frequency sensors. In this case, we cannot uh, transmit high speed data. So, DFB uh, distributed feedback lasers was developed. It can be considered as almost green one wavelength sensor. However, it's not enough in these days. Yeah, as you can see, I, I draw one arrow here representing a delta function. Uh, model modeling the uh, sinusoid in spectrum region. However, as you can see here, DFB lasers has some tones around the oscillation wavelengths. So we need to overcome this uh, to improve the uh, speed of communication. Okay, I omit these parts. The fibers, in the at this moment, you don't need to know about uh, your fibers in detail. It's just like a guide of light. We can guide light through optical fibers. Usually light can go straight, only go straight. It cannot bend. But by using fib optical fibers, we can guide lights any way we want. Okay? I pass them. Faster, faster. Uh, this is a little bit important. 
this graph shows uh, transmission loss of optical fibers currently used. Horizontal axis is wavelength, and vertical axis is loss in dB per kilometer. Per kilometer. Okay? Minimum is, uh, in this graph, minimum value is 0 0.2 dB per kilometer. It means, if we transmit the signal 100 kilometer, it has, the, uh, the channel has 20 dB. Do you imagine how big the 20 dB of loss? Optical energy launched into optical fiber at the uh, uh, transmitter site may be less than one one hundredth at the end of the fiber. Okay, it's 20 dB. Just 100 kilometers, just 100. Because we use optical fibers to uh, transmit signals uh, through, for example, Pacific Ocean. And in that case, uh, the transmission distance is more than 9,000 kilometers. Okay? So we need to overcome this loss. This is transmission window. 15-15 nanometer is the minimum loss wavelength. So usually we use this band called Conventional band, C band. Okay? And another part is modulator, but I pass, uh, I need this one. Uh, it's very related to you. As I told you, if we want to transmit uh, high speed data, we need shin size. This is an uh, equation uh, representing the modulating signal uh, of used in uh, five optical fiber systems. A cosine omega t plus theta. T is time. Okay? So we have three parameters. Intensity A and the frequency omega and phase C. The most important part is this part, phase. Old fashioned intensity modulated direct detection systems use only intensity to transmit the data. But if we want to increase the transmission speed, we need to use the three phase. But it's very, very complicated. Okay? Optical moderators uh, can change parameters of light, intensity, uh, in some cases, uh, frequency, or phase. Okay? Direct modulation of laser diode or uh, if we, we have uh, applied some electromagnetic field to some type of materials, we can change phase. Okay? And I pass them. Uh, this is uh, examples of electromodulated uh, signals. This is zero level, this is one level. As you know, uh, we can uh, represent all the information by one or zero. So we uh, con uh, con concentrating to transmit one or zero binary uh, signals, I mean. And uh, this is 100 megahertz, uh, 100 megahertz, 500 megahertz, that one gigahertz case. As you can see here, we don't have so, uh, and, uh, so much space uh, to have one or zero, uh, to separate one or zero, uh, if we increase the transmission uh, speed. So uh, I pass them, I pass them, pass them, don't need. Okay, so this is theoretical and actual power spectrum density of 10 gigabit per second. No return to zero, almost signal, almost signal. Okay, in this case, we can have very similar actual spectrum compared to the uh, theoretical one. And what should I, we do to improve the system is explained with this uh, bibliograph. This bibliograph shows bit error rate uh, characteristic for both on, off, and phase shift keying uh, signals. Horizontal axis is SNR, like right? a signal to noise ratio. So if we increase the value, 
signal level, uh, I mean uh, signal intensity or signal power uh, is uh, high. For uh, this case, uh, we can save energy. And this is a bit of a light. At this moment, here, one bit within 1,000 bit is uh, missed. Okay, 10 to the minus 3 here. By comparing these two systems, these are this is only intensity modulated signal. This is phase modulated signal. Okay, then if we can use phase, we can save energy. This is very important. Uh, not only to increase the transmission speed, but also energy consumption should be reduced. Okay? Uh, then we want to treat phases. Do you imagine how complicated to control uh, phase right? As I showed you, we use 15-50 nanometer light. Then, it corresponds to uh, the in frequency uh, almost 200 terahertz. 200 terahertz means only 5 femtoseconds in a period. Just 5 femtoseconds. 5 femtoseconds. Okay? 5 femtoseconds. Then, if we want to uh, transmit signal having uh, phase shift of pi, I mean uh, data 1 is transmitted to phase 0 and the data 0 is transmitted by phase of pi then we can switch phase of light in transmission rate okay? but if we want to uh, use 0 and pi then we need to uh, we need to suppress Phase error within tens, pi by ten. It means we need to control time shift less than 0 0.2 femtosecond. Ah, no, no, it's not 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 a second. 0 0.26 femtosecond. It means 20, 260 out of second. It's very short time. It's very really, really difficult to control physically. Okay? Not the difficult. Important I impossible. So how do we do that? We have three choices uh, to increase transmission rate. One is more simple process. We send signals very Short in very short time, but shorter symbol period results many difficulties. So we use more bits possible. I mean, that in that period, we transmit more data by using phases. Not only two phases in binary case, we can use four phases, eight phases, more phases. Do you imagine how difficult is it? We have to control the time, time shift of light very, very precisely. Oh, another uh, candidate is we use more transmission media, multiple fibers or something like that, but uh, I don't talk about that. The second one is very important for you because to realize this kind of phase control, we can do uh, physical control. So we need program. We need signal processing techniques. Okay. Then I think uh, not not so much time. So I don't explain in detail. But if we want to control phases of light very precisely, we can use these type of modulation programs. The first one explains uh, intensity modulated signals. Here, data one is transmitted by sending light. This is sensor, uh, this presenting light. In this case, uh, not here, but here. Uh, this case, 
we don't transmit data, uh, no, uh, we don't transmit the right, then this, it, it corresponds to sending data 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. In this case, the signal is represented like this. This is 1, this is uh, phase uh, compensation as algorithm uh, currently used in 100 gigabit per second systems. It's very simple. When we detect signal uh, of this type of QPS uh, systems, QPS systems, it use four phases, zero, pi by two, pi, uh, three pi by two. But if we further applicate it, uh, the signal, then all we can ignore them all because zero uh, times four is zero, and uh, pi by two times zero, uh, two uh, four is two pi. Uh, yeah, yeah, but four yeah, here, and uh, pi times four is four pi here. Then we can erase data from the received signal. Then what that we can get is noise, phase noise itself. Then the value uh, we can uh, extract, then subtract from the received signal, then we can know uh, what data, what sent from the transmitter side. This uh, algorithm was the data data for 100 gigabit per second system. Without this algorithm, we could not realize 100 gigabit per second systems. So very simple calculation method. However, it's very effective in final optimization systems. So we have many, many uh, signal degradation causes in pi optical communication systems. For example, we have noise in, uh, generated in amplifiers. We have loss, loss, and we have the data uh, from current high optical communication systems. So, please come and join us. Okay, thank you very much. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update.